Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. I am the voice of the Paladins, Dan Scott. Good to have you along with us. This guy beside me, I think everyone knows, Clay Hendricks, just wrapped up his sixth season as uh, head coach here at his alma mater. Had a a second-round venture into the FCS playoffs, just a phenomenal 2022 season, and I guess the way the business works, Clay, first of all, welcome. But the way the business works is all you have to do now is be better in 2023, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, but it's also exciting to have you think you got a chance to be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our game is uh, we play with a funny-shaped ball, and it bounces different ways. And, you know, certainly the health aspect of it, can you keep improving? Can you keep doing all those things? But, um but, I, you know, certainly excited about the group we have coming back and, and really excited, you know, when we're now a month into the off season and just how they've worked, you know, and doing the things you got to do, you know, to go have a good season. And so we're, we're off to a good start. And, and the guy that they're working with uh, mostly right now, obviously, is uh, Andre Bernardi, the strength and conditioning coach here. And it was just announced uh, a little more than a week ago that uh, he has uh, – also now added, uh, what, associate head coach to his title for the football program. What, what what does that mean for you? What does it mean for Andre? Well, I think Andre is certainly a, a significant leader in our program. He's certainly that on campus. I've, I've made this comment a number of times. Um, you know, in the, I guess now, five years, I think we hired Andre the, after our first year. But, you know, Andre Kate and his whole staff – you know, they've, they've done phenomenal things with football, but I've, I've, I've just witnessed a, a culture change on our campus, you know, and, and uh, I've observed these other sports when they come in there, and I just think they've been phenomenal for us. Certainly Andre's part in football is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, Andre's with them probably a lot more than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and really for me, that, that, that title was just, you know, you, you like titles for, for guys that uh, – I don't know, even when I had a title here and there – you, know, you just really like it to mean something. I, I just think, you know, from a leadership, he does a lot of those things already. He certainly takes a lot off my plate, as do a lot of our coaches. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll say this, Dan, I, there's probably a lot of guys on our staff that, that could serve in that same role, and really they do. Um, but uh, but I, I thought it was just a, a great way to honor him, reward him for the work he's done and what he continues to do with our guys. And um you know, I, I think he's highly, highly respected in the field. And, you know, there's a lot of other people have taken note of that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Andre's still here with us. And, uh, you know, so I, I think that's a credit, for, you know, to him and, and wanting to be a part of, you know, what we do here and how we do things. And, and certainly he's been a big part of that. Is it a prerequisite for a strength and conditioning coach to have the kind of motor that Andre Bernardi has, I like to joke and say he's a guy that makes coffee nervous. I mean, he 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 is nonstop all the time. Well, he really is, and you know, I, I, he had a strength. He actually had a an all day strength clinic here Saturday, and I was there for just a little bit. But yeah, Andre's just one of those guys that just never has a bad day, and um, you know, we all have days when probably we want to have a bad day, but I, I just you know. And I know he does, but I've just never seen it spill in, spill over into him doing his job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of our challenges here, you know, we, we uh, you know, everything from squad size, the number of teams that we have that use that facility. Um, you know, right now we're going Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the weight room, three different groups. And, I mean, if you, if you bring the last group in there at 5 o'clock or, or at 4 o'clock, he, uh, it's no different than he was the very first mm-hmm. one. Um you know, we're running, have a 7 a.m. run on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. And, again, I just think the consistency, how our kids respond to him. Um, I always say I think they're all scared to death of him. <laughs> but they respect him so much and appreciate him so much. It's really a really healthy, really healthy setup. And, you know, he's not a guy that demands that. It's mm-hmm. just something he's earned. And, 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 and again, we got phenomenal kids. And, uh I don't know, just really excited. Yeah, our numbers, we've we've got 92 kids in our program right now. We've ever had close to 92 kids in January. And I think it's a credit that kids want to stick around. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want to leave, and particularly in the crazy world you know that we live in now. They're finding ways to, you know, to stick around, be a be a part of it, and uh, I know it makes it fun to come to work. When your team was making its run uh, down the the stretch of the regular season uh, and into the postseason, every time that we interview somebody on postgame radio after one of those wins independently of one another, never prompted, almost always Andre's name came up about what you were able to do that late in the season and particularly in fourth quarters of football games late in the season because of the kind of condition that your team was in. And I know that's something that when you got here, you said that 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 needs to be one of the one of the hallmarks of your program, and, and I think we saw that in full display this fall. I agree. Um, you know, I mean, we're a we're a little bit unusual. You know, we're a, we're a lean a lean football team. Now, I'd I'd love to be big and lean, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but but again, I think it's just a combination of all the things he's done year round. You know, getting our, getting the buy in. You know, we talk about in the, our sport. You know, there's a lot of guys that love to tell you they're Division One football player, but what they what they better love is the grind. That mm-hmm. comes year round with it, and I actually think the better ones they do. I mean, um, when you have when you have thinking about stuff that you, you know, years from now when you're done, when even when I look back, things you remember, are those kinds of things more so. Yeah, there'll be some wins that'll stick with you. There'll certainly be some losses that stick with you, but it's just just buying into the grind that comes with it, and there's just no easy way to do it. And everybody's doing it. You know, everybody does it mm-hmm. to some extent, and it's just maybe who can do it a little bit better than others, but. But again, the buy-in, them and the staff, you know, been just did a phenomenal job. I think because I think it takes everybody, um, but certainly I think I don't care where you are in our sport. That that guy in that role has a huge you know, mm-hmm. impact on your program. Given the advantage of of some time now and, and some perspective and I know it's it's full bore on to to 2023 but but just looking back a little bit the way that you closed the season what you were able to accomplish and and then obviously the way the season ended when it looked like for all the world we had weathered that incarnate word storm and we're going to be able to win that game at the end didn't happen but for this team to do what it did make the second round of the playoffs when you look at it from from the hindsight being 2020 vantage point, what are you going to remember about that team? What what really sticks with you about what you accomplished in 2022? Well, I thought we got better, you know, throughout the year. I, you know, for me as a coach, it's always been, you know, when you look back at the season, I could even say this a little bit the year before, you know, when we finished good, we had some really unique challenges um, that – you know, did you maximize truly? You know, yeah, you could still win a game. We could easily have won the Incarnate Word game. We didn't. But just it, it, at any position, when I look back, just where were we? Just weren't good enough there. You know, we weren't good enough there. Well, we want to get better, but I just felt like we maximized. You know, a little bit of who we were, what we had. And I think that stands out to me. And then I think just if you watch this play. And, and and maybe it, this was some people that, that saw us play that didn't see us play as much. You know, you see us play every week. Mm-hmm. But just, man, how our kids love to play and play together, and you could just sense that, you know, that that uh, that true team, you know, that our team had. Um, and uh, it, was a, it was a fun little run. It really was. And, uh, you know, at that last one, we I, th- I told somebody the other day we had – I think we had three – three times in the last two or three minutes to win the game, twice on offense, once on defense, and mm-hmm. we just didn't make a play to get it done. But um, I think those are the things that, that just kind of stand out. I thought we got better in just the way they played together. You know, and we were blocking kicks and getting stops on defense and scoring points and special teams. You know, it just really was a great, great team effort. To advance as far as we did and come up short against Incarnate Word, but then to see what they were able to do the next week and then how well they played in the semifinals. The question may have been in some people's minds in in recent years, can Furman legitimately compete for a national championship game uh, or national championship again at the FCS level? Uh, 
what I saw this year, to me, if there were any questions out there, I think they, those questions were answered. I think that this team can compete for a national championship. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I got it on her wall in there, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it up there if I didn't think that. You know, um, everybody has their challenges, and we have we have ours here. Um, you know, I think you say that. I, I even told our team this. You know, one of the incarnate word guys stopped me at the national convention. I didn't know him. He just saw me and stopped me. And, you know, his first – you know, he congratulated us in that game and – and then he made the comment to me, he said, Coach, we thought you all better than North Coast State. Um, and, and the only reason I say that is this, I really thought we could compete with anybody. Mm-hmm. I really did. And, you know, a lot of years you can't maybe say that. And 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 uh, I, I just think we're at a time right now, and I feel like with who we've got returning, I think we've got a chance to be able to line up and compete with anybody. Um, you know, certainly wasn't the case. I thought we were kind of building towards that and then – the old, you know, the old COVID reset button, that one set us back mm-hmm. for a little bit. It maybe affected us a little bit more than some other people. But, um, you know, I, I think we have a good plan. Uh, I think we've recruited really well. I think we've done a really good job of developing players. I mean, you think about in the world of college football, I was, I was talking to a recruit the other day. You know, we have one transfer kid on our team, one undergrad transfer. Um, we have some couple grad grad guys. Um you know, we've had very little attrition. So, again, I, I think for us that is that is our model, you know. And I also think there's a lot of kids there, – there's enough kids out there that want to be a part of that, mm-hmm. you know, rather than the other. And, and I think, you know, I, um, I don't know who told me this, but, you know, sometimes your biggest challenges end up really being your strengths, you know, and some of the challenges we have from – academics admissions you know our pool of players is certainly significantly smaller because of the academic side of it but but i also think there's there's a lot of strength in that and and you know staff and um you know our staff has a has a great camaraderie right and you know and certainly a goal for me has been trying to keep those guys here as long as we can and we got some really some really talented guys um so it, it's you know it's fun to come to work and and uh, it's fun to come to work even when you don't play as well as you should you know um, but uh, we're we're at, a, we're at a good place you know can we continue to build and certainly um, you know I've been asked already a lot you know about okay now the maybe the target's a little bit on your back I said I, you know maybe I, I'd still rather be there than at the bottom of the hill trying to trying to find a way up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll just keep doing what we've been doing. And, um, and again, you got to have a little luck. you got to have some things go your way. Um, I mean, I think the two teams won our league the last two years had a lot of really things go their way. They did some really good things. Uh, but, you know, control what you can control. And, uh, you know, we just had the best term. You know, this is – I'm starting my 30th year at Furman. You know, as a player, as an assistant, you know, over three different spans and now as head coach. We just had the best term we've ever had academically. We also have the highest QM GPA that we've ever had any time that I've ever been here. Um, I can't say we had it tracked every single year. but So, I mean, we're doing great things on and off the field. And, uh, you know, we're just going to try to keep – there's a lot of things we can do better. And, you know, you know we're going to start practice here in a little over a week. And, you know, we've, we've certainly pinpointed some things we got to get better at. Clay Hendricks with us on this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Uh, I, I ask this next question with, with you know full transparency that I've never seen a head coach when asked about signing day stand up in front of the cameras and say, well, we totally goofed. We didn't get what we wanted. Early signing day, which the kids we can talk about, did you get what you wanted, Clay? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you ever get totally everything you want, but I was really pleased. We felt like we filled needs. Um you know, we signed 15 kids in December, two of which are already enrolled. Um, and they're here doing stuff with our guys. And, you know, we hopefully, you know, I don't know, about five more, four or five more here, you know, this this week. Yeah, recording this on and, Monday and signing day's Wednesday. And so. then we will have uh, – we'll have a couple of spots to work with, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. there are some there are some kids that, we'll, that we're dealing with right now um, – you know, probably some type of graduate type type situation where you know maybe they're not graduating until May. Uh, there's some of those kids out there, but they're 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 actually able to 
be portal kids. You know, the portal, mm-hmm. uh, the portal is, is purely a mechanism to help a kid, you know, transfer. It's all the other stuff that's going on. Um, so, you know, we'll have, we'll have a little space for a few more spots. Um, you know, we lost so few guys, we feel like, from a year ago. Now, next December we'll graduate a big, big class. And I think that really this class that we're bringing in reflects really who we'll lose probably more in December, kind mm-hmm. of trying to replace those guys. So, I mean, we're really pleased with how it's going. We feel like we feel our needs. There are still a couple more spots we'd like to, we'll like to address. And sometimes if you can plug an older guy in, uh, just like we did a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sherrod Cook, you know, he's another guy we can talk about. You know, we, uh, you know, the wing get transfer grad transfer who actually has a master's in accounting from Wingate already and he's working on a double major here um that's just and, that, that's and, just and we, pl- we plugged him <laughs> in you know into this class as a nose guard and incredibly productive guy if you watch his tape and so he's got one year and um man he's been an awesome fit so mm-hmm. that that's kids we're looking for right. and i can still see a couple more you know but we're also getting close to where we're maxing out our our numbers, you know, as far as what you can actually have, um, which is a good thing. We've really never really had to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, again, been pleased uh, with that, and we should have most of them here this summer. And, uh, and there's certainly a few that can help us next fall. You, you talked about retra- retaining your staff, and unless I've missed anything, you retained everybody but one, Antonio Wilcox. Yeah, up to this point. Up to the yeah, up, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like I said, I've learned this. This I tell you, this NFL thing has really changed things too, because you see so many guys leaving the college game now to go to the NFL because they don't want to deal with the largely they don't want to deal with all this NIL mm-hmm. transfer, re-recruit, you know, right. all that kind of stuff. But 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 yeah, you know and. But Antonio, uh, lost Antonio, and be able to hire Court Colder. Guy I had my kind of my eye on, you know, for a while. I th- and uh, had been at Davidson the last two years. I think led the country in rushing. Really, really bright young coach, and uh, is here working, and he'll be a great fit for us. Clay Hendricks with us as we continue on this week's Inside Furman Athletics. Uh, last week, the 2023 schedule was announced. I, I put the graphic up on the screen, and they're going to open up on a Thursday night again here on August the 31st against Tennessee Tech. So does that, does that mean that you like the Thursday night the last time? I, I did like the Thursday night. You know, some people won't play a night game. Uh, it's it's Labor Day weekend. I thought we had really good crowd. Certainly helped probably having North Greenville here with mm-hmm. just their proximity. But, no, I think, that's, I think that's a good time. Gives us a couple more days before I think we go to Columbia. The following Saturday, right. uh, but no, you know, and now we've gone from that schedule. Now we have two FBS teams on our schedule. Uh, you know, with with Kennesaw making that move, and you know they'll probably have seventy five scholarship kids. You know, by the time we play them, so in reality we're playing another FBS team. You know, so um, so that'll be a challenge, challenging start. I even think the Tennessee Tech team, if you look at their schedule, I mean they. They had Sanford beat early in the year, and Sanford beat them with a – I don't think it was even a two-minute drive. It was about a one-minute drive mm-hmm. they went down there and scored. So, uh, so no, it'll be a, it'll be a challenging be a challenging schedule, as it always is. But I think one will be excited to play, too. Yeah, the, the, uh, the league schedule begins with a home game against Mercer on September the 23rd, and uh, then it's nothing but SOCOM play all the way through with Wofford wrapping up the regular season on the road. On the 18th, um, with the two FBS teams, with Kennesaw State making the transition, do you like the balance of this schedule? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to have six home games you know, at some point in my career at Furman. <laughs> but <laughs> ne- next, uh, in 2024, with a 12-game season, that's, 12 that's on the game, table, right? I'd like to have six when we have 11 games. I got you. But, but I guess <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. But, you know, it's funny, the Kennesaw game, I think they played – it was before I came back. 16 maybe Mm -hmm. and then the game originally was supposed to been played about 19 18 19 they asked to move it because i think they were trying to schedule an fbs game Mm -hmm. and we agreed to and it got pushed back and it was their home game so it was uh 
you know, you know uh, I'm sure they wanted us to come there and play, and which be that's a great place for us to go play. I mean, they've been, uh, they've been really good, mm-hmm. uh, but that'd be a great, great. You know, I'm sure we'll have a great crowd when we go to Atlanta. Anytime we can go down there to play, will be will be good. But uh, you know, Columbia. Uh, you know, I haven't been there. I, in fact, I wasn't there in 1982. I was a freshman. Was when we won uh, d- down there, and the other exception of. I guess when I was at uh, my two years at NC State, we played them. But and then you know they played them a number, a couple of times here since then. since, since I, I since I I've been here. Yes, I wasn't here. Right. So, um, so I you know it's a huge challenge, but uh, I think one that we'll be excited to go go take part in. Well, trying to make sure that we don't keep you too long, let's let's get into wrap up mode here and, and talk about uh, the upcoming spring practice plans. You mentioned again we're recording this on Monday. January the thirtieth, so spring practices. You said is going to begin in about a week. What what will the the term look like? Well, it will be a week from tomorrow, which will be actually the date will be February the seventh. And I tell you, we are doing something a little different. You know, Dan, one of my biggest challenges here is is getting a time where I got all my guys. Mm-hmm. You know, between our class schedule, labs, you name it. You know, we you know we're, you know facility usage, facility sharing. You know, has an effect on it. So what we did, and we're trying this out, it's worked pretty well so far on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We asked our kids not to take a class until 10 a.m. Now, I think 98% of them, we could make that work. A couple, it was a little hard to make it work, so they'll have to slip out a little bit earlier. But we're actually going to practice on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, you know, probably in the 6.30-ish range. Um, But we'll go Tuesday, Thursday mornings, and then we'll probably either go – a Friday afternoon or a Saturday morning, so three days a week. Mm-hmm. That allows us to meet, watch our stuff between, still allows us to get in the weight room. Maybe a week to where we might would go Friday and Saturday on a lighter day. Uh, we got spring break in there. I think we'll come back, and then we'll have our spring, you know, if we call it a spring game, we'll call it that. It'll, it'll be another practice. Mm-hmm. Um you know, we've got really good numbers. There are, you know, particularly one position, the offensive line, we're still thin, you know, from a standpoint of practicing. We've got some guys that uh, just aren't ready to, or, you know, and it, aren't ready to be full full go in their practice-wise. So we'll just need to be smart in how we go about that. Um, you know, we had a couple guys coming off injuries. We had a couple of, you know – you know, why he was probably going to miss the spring, had to have a little ankle cleaned up, be, will be fine. All those guys shall be fine, but it's going to limit us a little bit, right. you know, during that time. So, you know, so we'll, we'll get out and get that work. we got plenty of guys that need lots of work. And you get a guy like Garrick Vollmer and, and Luke Pettit who really missed the whole year. And I really think if they had played, they'd have played a bunch of football for us last year. Mm-hmm. We'll get them both back. I think Luke's – Probably close to being pretty full go. Garrick will still have to be limited. He he, he had a pretty significant injury right. you know, back in August, so we'll limit him. You know, we we'll move some guys around. Looking at Jake Joe Hanning, maybe move him over to center. So we got a lot of things we can we can work on. And uh, uh, you know, can we can we keep getting better? It just when you go back and watch all of our cut ups, which we've done, and just attention to detail, some things that we did pretty good. But boy, if we could do a few things a little better, we got a chance to make it really good. And but some young back—I mean, we got a lot of good young players. We we, we only played, I think Caleb Williams at safety, and maybe Ben Ferguson were the only two guys that we played more than the four-game limit. So mm-hmm. we redshirted everybody else. So it'll be—I enjoy spring practice and and the work. We, you know, we're going to be we're going to try to be really organized and and get really good work. You know, but I don't. You know, we're not going to set record for the amount of time we'll spend on the field right you know we're just going to try to get better at that stuff and and then hopefully they'll carry over in august has there been a date set for the quote-unquote spring game yeah and i should i think it's the 18th that's a saturday um it's a saturday after spring break and i want to say march march 18th okay which might be our last day and again you know we've been able to we've had success with you know, being able to get a bunch of recruits here, mm-hmm. I think we'll continue to do that. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty – I should know that date, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is that is what the date is. Well, if it turns out to be something different, obviously we'll clean that up a little bit later on. But uh, 
Um, I, I figured you would know it too, since you're the guy in charge. <laughs> yeah, I should. I should. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what. Uh, you know, we talk about this all the time. There, there's no quote unquote off season anymore. Uh, it, it's it's year round. But to see the work that you guys are putting in, and I was in the office last week, and you were talking about running and things, and there were guys out there, and they were doing that work when nobody's watching, mm-hmm. and and that's that's. That's how you win football games. You do the work in the off season when nobody's watching you. Well, we've had great leadership. We had great <clears throat> leadership on our football team a year ago, and I think that will only continue to. You know, we have we have as good a group of leaders as any time since I've been. I, I'm gonna be honest. With you, we may have as good a group of leaders any time of any group in all my years at Furman. You know, you, obviously you think about some really good teams. So we have really good leadership, and and. You've heard this before, you know, when your best players are your best leaders, that's really where you want to be. And right. our best players are our best leaders. And, uh, you know, and I think they're hungry, too. I think they're all disappointed in how the thing ended, you know. And, uh, man, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know. But, uh, I, you know, and, you know, we didn't win the conference championship. So there's there's lots of things out there that we want to, we want to get accomplished. And, uh, well, good football coaches never, never fall short of finding ways to motivate their teams, do they? Well, we're working at it. Uh, again, I can't say enough about our staff and yeah. what they've done, how our kids have responded to them. But, we, you know, we've met with them. We've met individually. They've got individual goals. We, we, you know, we try to be as honest with them as we can. And, hey, this is what you got to do better. This is where i gotta, you know, I got to see, see improvement. Uh, it's both sides of the balls. We've targeted things, you know, both sides of the ball. These are things we've got to get better at. And, Part of that's recruiting. You know, a lot of it's development. Sometimes it's, you know, bigger, faster, stronger, um, really of, of all those things. But, uh, but boy, just to, it, it fires you up just to go be in that that room. And, and I think I talked about Andre. About, I, I think our kids, I, I, some days I think I've almost walked in there just to see if we're having a bad day. But, man, they come in there ready to work. And, um uh, it, it makes it fun, and it's. I'm surprised at how many times a parent, a recruit, or somebody has has has. has I had asked them; they brought it up to me. You know, they just kind of sensed it when they walk in the building, mm-hmm. when they walk in the room, and and uh, it, it's a, uh, it, it's a. Uh, we got a pretty special group of kids and coaches, and just just the whole. I, just getting everybody associated with our program. And right. It's, it, it's been really fun. Uh, as we get set to wrap up, I uh, you know we had the basketball game in Greenville yesterday, the the twenty ninth, and I saw Matt Schmidt's dad. Mm-hmm. He, he he came he came up to talk to me and, and and just continues to rave about Matt's experience here, and you know which which began under Bruce and and finished under you, but just raves about his experience here at Furman and, and Matt's married and and they're living in in Washington D.C. and working and, and doing really well, but it's it's just good to hear and see somebody who is you know, this far removed from the program now uh, as a parent and or a player, you know, five, six years later, still raving about the experience that they had here. That is, I mean, ultimately that's what you want. You know, that's what you want. And, you know, Matt Schmidt's one of those guys, you know, I only had him for one year. Mm-hmm. And, I, in fact, I've told Matt McCutcheon, your office line coach, and I said, you know, Matt's name came up at some point. And I told him, I said, you would have liked to coach this one. <laughs> He, uh, I said, he was he was a heck of a player and leader, and you know it was fun for him that that last year really to be able to flip things around mm-hmm. and have the year we had. And he had a he had a great great year, and boy, we'd love to have had a, had him a little bit longer, but uh, well, and, and a few more of him, a few more of him. But that was a, you know that that's a pretty pretty special group. When I think about those kids, you know, you look at PJ Blaze Jowski mm-hmm. and some of these guys, and and because really for us they're kind of ones that just completely flip. I'd say completely flip things, but they certainly got the thing headed in the right direction. Right. And, you know, we're excited where we where we're going, uh, you know, what the potential is out there. And, I, you know, I'm happy for our fans and, and people that love firm football. I know that's uh, – I could sense it in them as well. You know, I can be at a basketball game and have somebody come up to me and, you know, and they had not done that very many times, mm-hmm. you know, but there are a lot of people excited about it. We're excited about the season and – so it was again. It was it was fun, and you know we we, we got a little sand right Fun's in the winning, you right? Know, and so we we'd like to go have some more fun and 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 win some more games. Well, you do all the hard work between now and 
August the 31st, and, and that'll be here before you know it, opening on a Thursday night again. It will be here before you know it. And, uh, you know, we're just in this phase right now. We had a month before we start spring. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons I like going early, when we finish, we'll have about five weeks of training with Andre before we'll have the May break with the May master and then get them back in the summer. Then there'll be another small break in late July before we come back. And I think August, maybe uh, July 31st, maybe report day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but, but it will. So, um, yeah, we're just trying to worry about today and uh, it'll, it'll get here soon. Enough. Be, be better today than you were yesterday and be better tomorrow than you were today. That's about all you can do. That's right. Yeah. Well, listen, it has been great to catch up with you. I appreciate your time. I know uh, you got a lot going on, but I uh, always want to keep our fans involved with what's going on in the off season and and uh, looking forward to August the 31st. Good to cool. see you again. Same here. Thank you, Dan. That is head coach Clay Hendricks. This has been Inside Furman Athletics. Be back with another edition next week when uh, Robert Gary will be with us. We'll talk uh, cross country and track and field. Until then, for Coach Clay Hendricks and all of us at Furman, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody.